Merry Christmas in November everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here with a servant spotlight for the upcoming holiday event. This time we're going to be taking a look at the literal goddess of lewd, Ishtar. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. Now onto Ishtar's stats. Ishtar has a max HP of 13,965, it's well above average for a 5 star archer, and even slightly above average when compared to all other 5 star servants. Her max attack of 12,252 is the third highest among all archers, behind only Gil and Arjuna, and even when factoring in her 0.95 times archer damage modifier, her actual attack of 11,639 is still average for a 5 star servant. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Manifestation of Beauty Rank B, it increases the party's attack for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, and it also increases their crit strength for 3 turns between 10 and 20%, both depending on level. Her second skill is Radiant Great Crown Rank A, it has an 80% chance to apply invincibility and ignore invincibility for 1 turn, and it also increases her NP gauge between 30 and 50% depending on level. Finally, her last skill is Mana Burst Jewel, rank A+. It increases her attack after one turn has passed, for one turn, between 30 and 50%, depending on level. Taking a look at her passives, she has Magic Resistance, rank A, which increases her debuff resist by 20%, Independent Action, rank A, which increases her crit strength by 10%, and Core of the Goddess, rank B, which applies damage plus 225, and increases her debuff resist by 22.5%. Taking a look at her deck and Noble Phantasm, Ishtar has a Arts Buster deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Ingalta Kigalshi, which increases her Buster card effectiveness for one turn between 20 and 60% depending on overcharge, and it also deals heavy damage to all enemies with between a 300 and 500% damage modifier depending on level. Taking a closer look at her cards, we see that her quick card hits 4 times, her arts hits 4 times, her buster hits once, and her extra attack hits 7 times. She has an NP gain rate of 0.45% and a star rate of 8%. That averages out the average Noble Phantasm gain just due to the low NP gain rate but the high hit counts on both her arts and extra attack, and she has poor star generating because of just one quick card. Ishtar is an AoE buster archer. Whew, slow down DW, we're breaking too much new ground here, I don't think the world is ready for such a revolutionary new concept. In all seriousness though, Ishtar isn't just a copy and paste of Gil or Tesla, despite them having overlapping roles. For one thing, Ishtar has a tremendous stat line, sporting both high attack and HP. For reference, both of her stats are higher than Tesla's, and she has almost 1000 more HP than Gil, with only 20 less attack. Another plus for Ishtar is that she packs great passives. Core of the Goddess and Magic Resistance give her 43% resistance to debuffs, making her very resistant to enemy debuffs similar to the Gorgon Twins. An independent action synergizes well with her skills. Speaking of which, Ishtar's skill set is heavily geared toward offense, more so than any other archer. Manifestation is a better charisma. The party attack buff gives Ishtar a nice bit of utility and a consistent damage buff, but the crit strength bonus it gives shouldn't be overlooked either, it synergizes with independent action to give Ishtar a bonus 30% crit damage, and as an archer she will crit frequently. It also makes her great for assisting more dedicated crit servants like Emiya or Gil, and she packs a second offensive skill in Mana Burst Jewel. Just like the name implies, this is a Mana Burst variant. Rather than a buster buff, it's a straight up 50% attack buff, which means it's going to spread out to all of your cards. And 50% is a gigantic attack buff to have. This skill also only has a 3 turn cooldown at max level. It's one of the lowest cooldown skills in the game, making it very exploitable and it's always going to be available when you need to Noble Phantasm. However, as a semi demerit, it does have a one turn delayed activation, meaning it won't activate the turn you use it, the buff comes the following turn. So skill timing is extremely important and it's very easy to mess it up or miss out on having a brave chain. And finally Ishtar's only non-offensive skill 
is Radiant Rate Crown. It's a very strong 50% NP charge with a chance to grant you Invincibility and Invincibility Pierce. The 50% charge is important because it's going to allow you to Noble Phantasm right away, even when using craft essences like Halloween Princess or Golden Sumo, so you don't need to use Kaleidoscope to farm when you have Ishtar. The Invincibility and Invincibility Pierce are great too, but even with an 80% chance of activating, the Invincibility is still pretty unreliable. I guess you can say that even as a goddess, Rin is still defenseless in certain areas. Skill priority for Rin should be Mana Burst first because it's your strongest buff and it has the shortest cooldown, followed by Manifestation of Beauty for more damage, and then finally Radiant Crown for utility. If you already have a strong Buster Crit Servant like Gil or Rama, then you can also go for Manifestation of Beauty before Mana Burst so that you can have Ishtar work better alongside them. Ishtar's Noble Phantasm is very straightforward, it's just an AoE blast with a Mana Burst effect. As you may have noticed, Ishtar has two attack buffs and a Mana Burst on her Noble Phantasm. That means that despite her Noble Phantasm being AoE, much like Gil and Tesla, it can hit extremely hard. This combined with the low cooldown skills make Ishtar far more consistent in damage dealing than any other archer and she is by far the best choice for farming because of her NP charge skills. Unfortunately, despite the tremendous damage, Ishtar does still lack an NP interlude, so if you miss the timing on your buff, don't expect much damage from your Noble Phantasm. Also, despite her solid HP, she is still frail because of her unreliable invincibility skill, so she does need protection. Moving into team comp, Ishtar is a buster servant through and through, and she really functions well in two roles, either as your main attacker or your crit support. If you're going to use her as your main attacker, she's more suited for farming than any other archer, but she's also very capable of boss killing. When you're farming with her, I suggest pairing her with Shakespeare or Helena. Both of them are great because they provide an additional Noble Phantasm charge skill for Ishtar, which makes it a lot easier to get two Noble Phantasms off in one battle. They also have significant damage buffs for her for even higher damage. When facing bosses, I highly suggest using Shuten, Steno, and Edison. Shuten and Steno perform a similar role. Both of them can provide very good star generating for Ishtar for more consistent crits, and both of them pack significant buffs. Shuten's defense down plus charisma will give Ishtar a giant 40% damage buff, while Steno's charisma bonus for Divine Servants also gives Ishtar a straight 40% damage buff, and it's 60% if you factor in the defense down effect on Steno's Noble Phantasm. If you're facing male enemies, then use Steno, otherwise go with Shuten. Edison is here because he works fantastically as a star generator as well, and in addition, he can overcharge Ishtar's Noble Phantasm to double the strength of her mana burst. Outside of being the main damage dealer, Ishtar works as a crit support, especially for archers like Gil and Nobu. She isn't a good star generator, but a 20% AoE crit damage buff on a low cooldown is good to have, and she can do the job well enough with a 20-30. And Gil and Nobu don't have to worry about Ishtar stealing stars from them because both of them have a skill that increases their star weight. Defensively, make sure you pair Ishtar with a servant that can grant her hard defense like Mosh or one that boosts her buff rate like Ozymandias. Mosh is better if you need a more traditional support because she packs an attack buff in her Noble Phantasm as well, so she can give Ishtar all the tools that she needs to survive and to do damage. Ozymandias is better if you just want to go full damage. Protection of Raw will give your invincibility a 100% chance of activating, allowing you to protect yourself, and of course Ozymandias has utility with Charisma and the Noble Phantasm seal on his Noble Phantasm, and he just does a ton of damage. Ishtar's Bond Craft Essence is 7-Headed Warhammer Sita. It grants the party a 20% Buster buff at the cost of 20% debuff resist. This is a good craft essence, especially on heavily offensive teams, and thanks to Ishtar's passive, it won't affect her as much. 
Aside from her bond craft essence, you're going to want to use craft essences that bolster Noble Phantasm and Buster damage if you plan on using her offensively. Halloween Princess, Drunt Recital, Limited Zero, and Hero Ellie's Quest are all great options. Halloween Princess or Golden Sumo is going to be your best option for farming, while the other ones are more geared towards boss fights depending on your team comp. As a crit support, Ishtar benefits the most from Maiden Leading Chaldea or 2030. Both of them provide crit stars, while Maiden Leading Chaldea is going to give you a bit more room to deal some damage. And finally, for a bit of future proofing, both Aerial Drive and Demonic Brutus Hatfa are go-to craft essences. Both of them are going to allow you to get off a very strong Noble Phantasm right away. Overall, Ishtar is yet another strong addition to the Archer class. Rather than just being a watered down gill, she does bring a lot more consistency to her game and she isn't as niche as the other archers, making her extremely effective for both farming and boss killing. Her damage output is very high because of her strong skills, she has great resistance to debuffs which increases her viability for more challenging content, and she is the best farming archer in the game. On the downside, she does have a lack of defensive consistency because of her unreliable invincibility and because she currently lacks a Noble Phantasm interlude, if you miss the timing on her skills, her damage drops off tremendously. So overall, she gets an A from me. She's just a few shades shy of being one of the strongest offensive servants in the game. With a few tweaks and a Noble Phantasm interlude, she can easily push herself into guild tier. But even so, as she is now, she's very viable as an alternative to Gil in many scenarios, even if you already have him. And those are my thoughts on Ishtar. I should add that she gets an A plus in the waifu tier list, but only because Eresh gets an S. But let me know what you think, and if you plan on rolling for her in the comments below. Look forward to the Jolter Lily and Christmas event guides coming soon. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I will see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Brony out, later.